Stuart, Jaden Sancho, and there he is in the back of the Times this morning. He's covered everywhere. And he's got Dortmund number 10, Sancho. He played there before, of course. And we know that. Sancho goes home to Dortmund. So, I mean, it's somewhat baffling. Jude Bellingham goes to Dortmund, improves no end, ends up at Real Madrid. Mm. Jaden Sancho comes out of Dortmund, goes to Manchester United, dream move, goes pear shape, comes back. Who's to blame? Who's to blame? I always think he's a player. I really do. Um, I've heard too many things coming out about uh, Sancho that, that I don't particularly like, lateness for training, all of those type of things. And listen, I've never met the kid, but if that is the case and the attitude to training isn't right and whatever, the managers are rarely, rarely wrong. If, you know, we've heard, you know, Ten Hag come out and say certain things. Sancho denying those things are actually true from the train in regard to lateness, in regard to attitude on a training pitch. I always think it's rarely the manager gets it wrong. It's often the player because the manager's looking at the whole picture. The per- the individual just sees himself and the importance of him and what suits him. For me, it's always the player. Why does it keep happening though, Stuart? Simon, I, I, I'm getting to you in one second because I know you've got strident view in this. Why does it keep happening at Manchester United? Well, Pogba, Sanchez, Di Maria even. Now, Sancho, you can maybe add Anthony to that. Well, Anthony's come here and he's just not playing well. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with his attitude or anything like that. I just think that he's not had an impact in but regard to scoring Why goals. Or, well, maybe when you sign a player to come into this country, not all of them hit it off here. And some of them have to leave and, and they don't hit the ground running for whatever reason. Listen, you, let's go back a couple of years when Ten Hag made the stance that he did with Ronaldo and everyone was patting him on the back for saying, look, the club are much bigger than the player, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And he's made the right judgment call. Or when he left Rashford out for, for maybe being late for training, all of those type of things. I was one that applauded him and still do now for, for doing that. That's yeah. his job as a manager to do that. So I mean, the backstory to Sancho, Simon, if it's to be believed, is that lateness wasn't performing in training yeah. as, as he was expected to do. So Ten Hag calls time on him and flags it up yeah. in public yeah. that maybe he's got an attitude problem yeah. and he's not performing as he should in training. Sancho bites back yeah. in public. Only one winner and it's not Sancho. Yeah. But he's come out of this with another another instalment in his career looking very, very positive for no, him. No, not really. I don't think anyone that is particularly impressed, Dortmund might be, because they've got this relationship with him historically and they're nicking him. And they're getting him for a fraction of what these wages are. They've already trousered 70 million quid from Man United and they're getting him back for two and six and a fraction of his wages. The Dortmund have got no skin in this game. And so with that in mind, those that are looking around at it, football will look at it and say, well, I'm not quite sure about this player. And it's, it's based upon two things. The, the, who's to blame for this? The culture that Man United have allowed to develop inside their football club that engenders players with a belief system they can behave the way that they are. The recruitment policy that's recruiting players that are clearly fit for purpose or ha- have the understanding of what they should and shouldn't be doing playing for Man United. And the fact that Ten Hag is trying to change the direction of travel and is having to break some serious eggs to make an omelette. And the fourth thing is that every single microcosm of Man United is analysed within an inch of its life in every single newspaper, in every single media outlet around the world. Why do you think it's happening at, at United? Because I just on told a semi, you. But on a semi-regular basis. I just told you. Because of big-name players I, I just told not, you. not getting where they want to get to. I just told you. The absolute reasons I just told you. You're signing players that are big-name players on paper, that have big attitudes and big outlooks, that are not the right foot, foot, foot football club. Pogba was let go by Man United for a reason. Pogba came back to Man United. Look where he's gone now. Right? Look where Sanchez went. Look what Sanchez did. He did not choose Manchester United because it was a it was because it was Man United. He chose them because they offered more money than Manchester City. These are these are points that where you once upon a time you chose Man United because of the the fabric of this football club. You've allowed this culture to deteriorate. Where you've got background noise from all these ex players that are constantly having their two pennies in the, in the equation. They yeah. know more about everything than actually the people that are running the football club. And some of them may well do from a historic point of view. Then you've got a situation where you put managers in place. And I do not care who thinks this is, a, this is an attack upon an individual, like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, where Stan is allowed to deteriorate. You've got Mourinho that dialed it in for a period of time. So all of these things then engender this environment where once upon a time you knew where you stood. You knew what it meant to play for Man United and you knew what your responsibilities were. You knew that you dare not put out performances in front of the manager, let alone the Old Trafford crowd that you were putting out now. 
And now you've got players that think completely differently because the, because the standards have dropped. So you recruit the wrong players, you put them inside the wrong culture, you get the wrong outlook. Then you get a manager coming going, that'll do. Yeah, that's enough of this now. I'm going to put a stop to it. And all of a sudden, that culture has seeped into the gene pool that exists inside the fabric of that football club. And now you're trying to eradicate a deep-seated disease. And you're going to have to have a battle with it. Rashford's not been right. Rashford's not a world-class footballer. He keeps getting put out there. Players that are world-class footballers don't have one good season, one bad, one good season, one bad. They're just good players, not world-class players. Is Rashford world-class, Stuart? Well, world class is, is Mo Salah because Mo Salah continually he might have one bad game, two bad games, and not score for a couple of games. Yeah, but continually yeah. he keeps churning out performances. Yeah, why does it happen at Manchester United? Simon's gone into it there, but it seems these days uh, maybe the psyche of the player has changed, and that the recognition of the fact that they're playing at Manchester United doesn't get through to them as it has done with players in the past, particularly under Ferguson. Is that the case with Jaden Sancho? Was it always going to happen with Sancho? It seems it was always going to happen with Pogba. It seems it was always going to happen with Sanchez. Should we be surprised? that Sancho gets another stab at it, but not at United, at Dortmund. And Manchester United fans are going to ask you this morning, Sancho's gone. What's your take on it and the way the whole thing has been handled? What's your take on the fact that Jadon Sancho, by all accounts, refused to apologise to Ten Hag for what he said for his part uh, in, in the event and, of course, has now been sent packing? What is your take on this whole Jadon Sancho saga? 03717. Double two, double three, double four, eight ten, eighty nine. Sancho fell out with Eric Ten Hag in September after Ten Hag revealed in a press conference that he dropped him for a game against Arsenal because he had trained poorly. Sancho responded with a somewhat acerbic social media post in which he said Ten Hag's claims were quotes completely untrue. Ten Hag told Sancho that he'd be forgiven if he apologised, but the player refused to apologise and was banished from the first team and from that point onwards trained alone and that's where we're at the rest is history uh, a truce could not be made and Sancho has gone back to Dortmund I wonder Stuart how Manchester United fans are reflecting on that this morning again Stuart you, before we take some calls and we, there are many you would say in this instance I take the manager's side of this if you were Ten Hag would you have behaved exactly like Ten Hag I'd like to think so. Obviously, you're trying to balance the whole squad and an individual within that squad. But as Simon mentioned earlier, it's Manchester United, you know. This this is one of the biggest clubs in the world. And you've got to have a, a code of conduct within the group. And if you feel as though someone's stepping on and beyond that, that's eroding the dressing room, yeah. you've got to do something about it. And the, the the nature of the game nowadays, you know, the money players are, are, are paid, the squad size... And the status that the players think that they've got, they think they're bomb-proof at sure. times and they don't have to actually go out there and put sweat on their shirt and turn up on time. I don't think he, I don't think he thought he was eroding the dressing room because there seems to be a lot of players that were actually quite supportive of Jaden Sancho. I think what uh, Sancho, uh, what Ten Hag would see is, is usurping of his authority. And the reasons why it's a usurping of his authority and the reasons why it got to the stage, because I don't think it's ideal, and neither would Stuart, that you get to a point where you voice your grievances about a player in the media. You only get there as a path of last resistance because you've done everything else. And the reasons why you say you've done everything else, because that kid went away where the previous season? He went to Holland to be able to get himself together with some mental rehabilitation that was required as a result of whatever particular challenge he was having at the time. And who do you think would have arranged that? Because who would have had that relationship in Holland? Ten Hag, because that's where he came from. So I would suggest to you that all paths were exhausted. And for Ten Hag to take the decision to go and out the player, in public was probably a culmination of absolute exasperation about yeah. not because we haven't got a kid here that's arrived on these shores and gone wow look what he's doing we've got a kid here that everyone's gone he's not what we thought he was yeah sure he's a mile away from it so I think that Ten Hag was put in no in, in, in an absolutely invidious position and I'm surprised that it's taken well, I suppose it has taken this long because the first available opportunity to get the kid out the door would have been January and Ten Hag has been forced into a situation where you either it's not a case of go hard or go home but there is a case of I am the manager of this football team and there is going to be a line that people don't cross mm. and the player does not have the right, neither should his agent have been encouraging because his agent came out with his two penny for tripe um, about what his kid's entitled to say and it should have been shut down. This player has had it done it at Manchester City, that's why they shipped him out. 
He's had it at England in terms of his punctuality. He's now had it at Man United. If there's a common denominator in this, which is the player, you might draw the conclusion who the problem is. Well, I wonder what United fans think of this now. Is it a case of good riddance? George, big Manchester United fan who's been waiting patiently. Good morning to you, George. What's your take on it? Morning, guys. Can you hear me all right? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah, great show. Great show. First time caller. Um, no, no I just want to. Um, I just want to touch up on well, what Simon said, really. Yeah. Uh, you know, Ten Hag's been on 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 Sancho's side for me the whole time. You know, he's took time out of it to take training in in the Netherlands, as Simon's touched up on. Um, so I'm seeing people on Twitter going against how Ten Hag's dealt with it. Yeah, fair enough. He probably shouldn't have called him out in the you know in his press conference, but the way Ten Hag's dealt with it, I'm 100 percent on his side. Um, the funny thing is as well I've seen on Twitter that uh, Sancho actually turned up for his medical at Dortmund late which was quite funny I I found (laughs) no I didn't know that okay George thanks for that Mm -hmm. well that's true that says it all doesn't it (laughs) I mean Stuart can you you played at a time you played under Clough for God's sake Mm. if you needed to apologise to Clough for something I presume you would have done just that of course you have to and the, the, the bottom line there's some non-negotiables in football firstly yeah. courtesy to your dressing room be there on time on time means early you know just common sense train as hard as you possibly can as a professional you know and and conduct yourself as though you're representing the football club at all times end of yeah Connor big United fan what do you think what do you make of it all hi boys you alright um, good show morning um, Connor I don't agree with Simon too much uh, when he talks about United, but I think he's been... I'm sorry to hear that, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think he's been absolutely spot on this morning about it. Um, I, I, I don't think it could have been handled any other way. Um, there's a reason why Pep let him go from City. It's because he has this attitude problem. He's gone to, to Dortmund. There was a video on Twitter this morning. He was kissing the badge. It was like, that's a kick in the teeth to every United fan. Is um is a disgrace to be honest. Do, does it baffle? Do you end up scratching your head, Connor, when you hear that Sancho was on around two hundred and fifty grand a week uh, in a contract which had two and a half years to run, and yet he can't say sorry to his manager? Again, it's, it's disgraceful if you, if you can't show up and perform in training. Um, I think Roy Keane's touched on it before. If you can't turn up in training, you can't turn up for games. It's as simple as that, and. If the manager's calling you out publicly, that means he's done everything he can to help you to get to that point, and this is the last thing he's resorted to. So, so yeah, it's yeah. yeah. It, thank, thank God he's gone. To be honest, and um, hopefully we, he didn't come back and we get some money for him in the summer. Connor, thanks for that. Um, Jack is a United fan. Jack, here's the thing: Dortmund don't have an option to buy Sancho, so we might be back with you. Morning, gents. How you doing? Morning, Jack. You sound very <laughs> chirpy. <laughs> I mean, he could come back, Jack. You, you know, Sancho, they don't they don't have an option to, to buy him Dortmund, so he might come back. Listen, at the end of the day, this is what I think of it, right? This is not a negative for Manchester United in any way, shape or form. This is a complete positive. They have yet again gone and identified yet another player that is in that club, such as like another Paul Pogba, another Jesse Lingard. And I think this is the right thing for Manchester United to do and for Eric Ten Hag to do, to move these players on and get them out of the club and start rebuilding again. And like we just touched on there, getting this club back to what it means again, because at the minute, like Cristiano Ronaldo pushed on Piers Morgan a couple of years ago, the fundamentals of that club are completely wrong at the minute. The infrastructure's wrong. That's got to be sorted within that club. And removing these types of players within that football club right now is what needs to be done. Are you amazed that this goes on, Jack, seemingly, at the football club? You've seen a procession of players come and go and having contributed, contributed next to damn all. Well, I mean, I'm going to stand firm with this, and I've said it for a very long time now. Until you get rid of those glazers, you are not changing anything at that club. You can change the manager as many times as you want. I know they've gone and said on Sky Sports Punditry, like, Carragher before he's got it said so you're telling me if you fix the roof here at Old Trafford they're going to start playing better no we don't need that at all you've got to get your fundamentals and your infrastructure correct first and the first move is get rid of those glazers get rid of those players and let's keep moving forward with rebuilding this club properly Jack I think I'm not speaking for him because he can speak for himself and he does on a daily basis I don't think the glazers have much to do with it have they? they do and they don't 
because the constant what? the constant distraction is what the Glazers do and don't do. I don't remember Martin Abels being the greatest football club chairman that God ever put breath into. I don't remember Martin Abels making the best decisions at Adam for I remember Martin Edwards trying to unload it to Michael Knighton for 10 million quid just before the Sky Bonanza came along. So the Glazers are responsible for making the decisions that have allowed Man United to fall behind the, the, the opposition that's gotten bigger and better and stronger. But the main protagonists for delivering outcomes on the pitch and choosing the players and, and not being able to get the players to achieve the outcomes are the, are the managers and the players themselves. The Glazers are the umbrella. Yeah. How much money have they given them? Oh, more money than everybody else. They've had $1.7 billion spend in 10 years. Yes, yes, yes. They've taken fortunes out and they've taken dividends and they've paid interest payments and they didn't put their hands in their pocket to buy it in the first place. But they still spent more money than everybody else to be nowhere near as good as everybody else. And mm. that's just not about the Glazers. That's about the people, of course, who put them in there, the Glazers. Yeah. When you put Mourinho in a dugout, you put Louis van Gaal in a dugout, and you put Ten Hag in a dugout that are reasonable appointments, you might expect a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. Just a view. Uh, I wonder if he'll be back. I mean, Saving to be, for a friend. To be quite honest, you, you have to wonder if he'll be back because they don't have an option to buy. Stuart, just before we, we finish on United, Ten Hag will overtake Sir Alex win rate at United with a win against Tottenham this weekend. Mm. I mean, can you believe that? His record would reach 55 wins from 92 games if, if United beat Spurs this weekend, which would be a 59.78%. percent 1,000 games. Can't compare ninety-two games to a thousand games. Well, what what the comparison is win ratio? It doesn't take into consideration the loss category as yeah. well. You know, yeah. I mean, this season they've lost, I think, near enough the same amount as they've won. Well, it looks like he's got a thirty percent loss ratio. So it looks like it's something quite admirable about it, isn't it? It's either S or bust, isn't it? Yeah. Right? It's, it's nothing in the middle. It is indeed. Uh, whereas yeah. Ferguson and other top managers have got a much... I mean, the only exception to that is the ridiculousness of Pep Guardiola's 75% win record. I mean, that's just astronomical. No, no one's near yeah. it. No, no one's near it. Yeah. Right? No. So you look at it and say, I mean, you know, ele- he's got 11, 30% of the games. So for three and 10 games, they lose. So that means they're going to lose a minimum of 9, 10, 11 games a season in the Premier League. That's not heard of at Man United before. Yeah, in true. Previous, in previous incarnations. This is where these stats can be a bit misleading because we had, when the pass completion stats started to arrive on my office... <laughs> of course, sideways at the back. 93%. But he only passes it three yards sideways to his mate. He, he never <laughs> passes it. That's it true. doesn't do anything that, that's going to hurt it. the opposition. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Okay, well, Jaden Sancho has gone back to Dortmund and could well be listening this morning. Who knows? Jaden, a Vidicin pet. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.